Hello, Shashmi. What happened to your back? Hi, teacher. About my back? Um, well, to cut a long story short, I went to the countryside for a family trip. Wait, let me guess. After driving long hours on bumpy roads, you must be suffering from some back pain, right? Exactly, teacher. That was one hell of a ride. Nevertheless, I think you owe a big thanks to your car's suspension. What do you mean? Well, it's the suspension of the car, especially the shock absorbers and springs that absorb most of the vibrations while driving. Without it, you would probably end up in a hospital instead. Oh, wow. Thank goodness. But teacher, I want to know how the suspension systems of vehicles work. I mean, how are they capable of absorbing these vibrations and shocks? Well, the simple answer to your question is damping. Damping? You must be joking, right? Not at all. What makes you think that I'm joking? Well, how on earth does motioning or wetting help cut down vibrations? Oh, I see. You must have confused this term with another similar sounding word called dampening. Oh, oops. So, teacher, what does damping mean in physics then? Simply put, it is the slowing down of the vibrations over time. Tell you what, let's get back to our favorite pendulum laugh simulation. That will definitely give you some insight into this. Sounds like a plan. All right. First, let me ask you a question. What would happen to the oscillation of the pendulum if we were to set the value of friction to zero? Um, wait, I've tried that one before. Um, it would go on and on forever, right? That's true. Without any resistive forces, such as friction or air resistance, acting on an oscillating system, the oscillations will idly continue forever. Does that mean the amplitude remains constant as well? You're right. In the absence of resistive forces, no energy is dissipated, which implies that the amplitude remains constant over time. In addition to that, the frequency also remains constant. We call this frequency the natural frequency, and we call the oscillations free oscillation, which we have generally referred to as oscillations so far. Ah, okay. But teacher, I seriously doubt that would be the case in real life. Indeed. So let's set the friction value to be greater than zero. Hmm, yes, this one is more realistic. I mean, take an example of a boy playing on a swing. If we were to give him an initial push and then leave him alone, the oscillation would die out gradually and he would eventually come to a stop. That's right. So, can you infer what's happening here? Um, in the absence of resistive force, the oscillation of a system goes on and on. However, in the presence of certain resistive forces, the oscillation decreases over time and it will eventually stop if no driving force is added to the system. That's right. And this phenomenon of the decrease in the oscillations over time due to the presence of resistive forces is what we call damping. Oh, I see. And this type of oscillation is rightly called a damped oscillation.